Hi guys, my name's Graham, and uh, I have contact with a lot of English teachers all over the world, including uh, a friend and colleague, uh, Hari Krishna, in India, and also uh, Priscilla Suzuki in Brazil. Both of them have asked me to record videos about certain aspects of UK culture. And it's always a very broad topic when people ask about English culture or British culture, uh, um, because it's everything, as you know. It's music, it's what people do in their free time, it's the film scene, um, live events, it's the way people interact with each other in the street, in shops, with their friends, at work, at school. All of this is culture, and I'm sure that's no surprise to anybody. So it's such a broad topic that I feel at liberty to speak about any aspect um, of it. So I'd like to speak initially about how people have been dealing with um, the pandemic, with COVID-19. It's been with us now for a few months, at least three months uh, in the UK, uh, particularly. And um, although it's fair to say that we're beginning to ease out of lockdown, we're beginning to see people returning to the streets, the shops with certain precautions. Some people are wearing masks, um, people are still distancing in many situations. Unfortunately, though, a lot of people are so fed up with, with lockdown and remaining at home that they um, really want to escape to beaches and beautiful places for picnics. And there's been a lot of uh, people who have simply disregarded all the safety measures and the social distancing measures. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, the infection rate seems to be increasing slightly already as a reflection of what people have been doing recently uh, as a result of the good weather that we've had. Because England is notorious or infamous for having bad weather, uh, cold, cloudy, rainy weather. It's not always like that. In the summer, we're sometimes very lucky. And recently, we've had um, some excellent weather, temperatures up to and over 30 degrees even, uh, which means people have gone a little bit crazy. Um, but there are certain elements of culture in the UK, which when I compare them to other countries that I've lived in and, and traveled to, um, you would have to agree are more prevalent in the UK than in other places. So for example, there's a culture here of people saying sorry a lot, even if there's no real offence being caused. So for example, if two people are walking uh, down the same corridor in a supermarket, especially now with the need for social distancing, um, simply because they may be taking up the space that the other person was going to use if they walked straight ahead, there'll be a little dance sometimes and people will say sorry, sorry. Um, and then keep going and they'll go past each other. So that's an interesting curiosity uh, about the way some people interact in the UK. I know in Canada, it's very it's a very common stereotype to say that uh, Canadians are always saying sorry, even if there's no need, even if their American neighbours, for example, cannot understand why they would be saying sorry in that situation. It's a cultural thing. And I guess some of those aspects of Canadian culture, um, and of course, Australian culture and elsewhere around the world would have indeed been inherited from, from the UK at some point in the past. Um, I don't want to make this video too long, but uh, I know there's, there's a lot of things that you could discuss about the relationship between um, culture in your countries and culture in the UK and how they might differ. But I think um, it's always a, a danger when you talk about culture in a generic way, you're trying to make generalizations about British culture, because there's so much diversity, there's so much variation between the culture of one family uh, and maybe next door to them there's another family that has a completely different culture within their home similarly between cities in the uk so you may have a culture which is uh, common or, or prevalent in a particular neighborhood a particular zone of london but if you go to another neighborhood or another zone where maybe the population has a slightly different makeup more people from different countries um, different languages being spoken, the culture will be completely different. And if you go outside of London and go to rural communities in the countryside, then you're, you'll really get a, a culture shock because it'll be like another world, completely different from a big city. And I think this applies to all countries. So I'm always very wary about making generalizations and sweeping statements about culture and how one culture differs from another. And even more wary about suggesting that one culture may be in any way superior to another. Because there are lots of aspects of um, other countries that when British people or Europeans visit, they fall in love with and they say, oh, this is wonderful. Why isn't it like this at home? Why aren't people as friendly and outgoing? And why don't we have so many parties? And, you know, why don't people um, interact with each other in the same way as they do in this culture, in whatever culture they're visiting? So there are always going to be things that we find positive and things that we find negative, And that's going to be different for each individual. 
Some people are very extroverted and like a culture where people are used to coming up and asking direct questions. In some cultures, it's even uh, acceptable to ask people about their salary, how much they earn, whereas in the UK, for example, that would be a, a big no-no. That would be quite a uh, potentially quite a, an embarrassing question, although some people would feel absolutely fine with it. I wouldn't mind, um, but some people get offended by those things. So it's incredibly difficult um, in a short video like this to try and put across things that people should or shouldn't do in a particular culture, because it will vary from one person to another, from one family to another, from one city, from one region. Um, and that's what makes visiting another country so fantastic, so exciting and so revealing, because the more you travel, the more people you interact with, whether it's online or, or, or physically visiting, um, the more we learn about how different people do things differently. And that's what makes life interesting, in my view. So I hope you've enjoyed this brief video and I hope it's useful for, for my friends who are teachers of English around the world and to their students. Take care.